So we're going to go over the production possibility frontier in this lecture video today. Um, the production possibility frontier is a relatively simple model that economists use to simplify um, what happens in a country's economy. And so what the production possibility frontier shows is it shows the relationship between two products that a country produces and it shows opportunity cost. And so one of the things that um, this simplified model shows us is that when we produce something, we inherently cannot produce um, the exact same amount when we do um, something else. And that's what um, opportunity cost is. And so um, the setup for a production possibility frontier is pretty simple. You need a one quadrant graph, Y and X axis. You need um, a country. So this is gonna be, we'll just say it's the United States. And we'll say that the United States is producing uh, corn. And we'll say that the United States is producing watermelon. So two products. It doesn't really matter what the products are as long as you have two products. And need a negatively sloped curve or line. And this is essentially the production possibility frontier. Um, we're going to add some numbers and we're going to talk a little bit about what those numbers mean here in a second. Obviously, the United States produces more than just corn and watermelons, but in this example, the um, production possibility frontier is showing us that when we make more of one of the items, we have to make less of the other. Um, and so if the United States just focuses their attention on making corn, they can make 50 units of corn. And if they focus all of their attention on watermelon, they can produce 100 watermelon. Only focusing on watermelon, only focusing on corn, are really the only two numbers that we need in the production possibility frontier. Um, all along the curve, we would say that this right here is um, points that the United States is efficient. And so what we mean by that is that they're using all of their resources that they can to um, produce as much of the item as possible, given the restraints of the economy, land, money, the amount of crops, weather, things that, um, that contribute to um, being able to produce these two items, corn and watermelon. So we'll say that at point A, at point A, the U.S. can produce uh, 35 corn um, and a few more than zero watermelon. So we'll say that they can produce 25 watermelon at point A. Okay. We would expect that every time that the U.S. produces 35 corn, that they would be able to produce 25 um, watermelon and vice versa. But what happens if we produce 25 watermelon, but we don't produce 35 corn? We only produce 30 corn. At point B. We would say that point B is inefficient because at 25 watermelon we should be able to produce in this economy 35 units of corn. But we're only able to produce 30 at point B and so we would say that point B is inefficient. And all of the points below the curve are going to be inefficient. All of the points that are along the curve are efficient. And not only are they efficient, they are productively efficient. And what we mean by productively efficient is that they're using all of their resources to the best of their ability to make as much of both of the products as possible. There is another type of efficiency, allocated efficiency, that we'll get to in Unit 2. But at point A, and even at point C here, we are productively efficient because we are producing along the production possibility curve. Let's say that we have a point outside of, to the right of, the production possibility frontier. Here at point D where we produce 50 corn and 100 watermelon at the same time. Well, given the current economy in this example, 
we know that we can't produce both 100 and 50 at the same time because um, we are using our resources as well as we can because we're productively efficient along the curve. At point D, we would say currently is impossible. Currently impossible. And the reason why it's currently impossible is because we don't have economic growth to push the curve to point D. Only way that we're able to get to point D is if we have economic growth. And economic growth is caused by new technology and resources that would push the curve out here to point D. That's the only way that we can get there. Okay? So this is the setup of the production possibility frontier um, and the points where we are productively efficient, A and C, where we are inefficient at point B, and where currently that it is impossible to produce over at point D. A couple of things to really, really remember and, and um, not to forget. Two products and you need a country title um, for full credit on a test or a quiz for production possibility frontier that you graph on your own.